How to perform a Kanzari reading. All you need is a deck of Kanzari cards. First and foremost, you never want to use Kanzari cards alone. Ever. The supernatural should never be taken lightly. Also, in case an overwhelming connection is made, one where visions from the other side actually materialize, you'll certainly want witnesses. The idea here is to find a place that you already suspect is haunted, or at least a place that you feel comfortable trying to contact the deceased. You need a flat surface, typically a tabletop, and readings are usually under candlelight. Most professional ghost hunters have a lights out rule, as supernatural activity occurs during peak night hours. One person serves as the reader, and everyone else observes, but they can often be just as, if not more important to the reading. The reader handles, reads, and interprets the cards. This person is considered to be in charge as they are channeling messages from the other side. Observers are just as important as they often find a synchronicity with the events, people, or messages that appear. Also, observers are encouraged to utilize tools for recording and documenting any paranormal phenomenon during a reading. This includes photographic and video recording, as well as audio recording for EVP and monitoring thermal and electromagnetic fluctuations. Now you're ready to perform a reading. Step one is to shuffle the cards. Step two is to shuffle the cards again. It's important that the cards are shuffled well. Everyone present should take a moment to participate in this. You'll want all of the observers to take a turn shuffling as their touch can affect the outcome of the message from the other side. Step three is to lay out 12 cards face down into the diagram seen here. Make sure the angles of the cards are precise as they may indicate compass-like directions when flipped. Set the rest of the cards into a stack face down into the left hand corner. Step four is to retrieve the far north, south, east, and west cards and discard them back to the bottom of the deck. Alternately, you can leave these four cards in place but never flip these cards during a reading. You want to look at these cards. Don't do it. The whole reason why is out of respect for the other side. Why exactly these four are discarded is a mystery and not meant to be viewed by the living. Step five is to begin flipping the remaining eight cards. Slowly flip over each card, but keep them placed in the original diagram. First thing you'll notice when flipping through the cards is that each card has a photograph on it. As you flip the cards, you try to interpret what they mean to you. Everyone interprets the evocative images differently at different times. Some trigger a memory or something even from a dream. You may see connections between the cards that complete the puzzle. So as an example, let's say the first card you flip over is girl. Fair enough. Closet, which is interesting because there's one right over there. Movement. Okay. Next one. Happens to have an arrow pointing directly at the closet. I think you can kind of see where this is going. In the lower left-hand corner of each card, you'll find either a symbol or a color. Depending on the cards displayed, the location you're in, or people present, these symbols or colors may mean something to you. In the bottom right-hand corner of each card, you'll find either a number or a letter. Any number or combination of them may find significance to the message, situation, or people present. The letters displayed could spell words that present additional clues. Take the time to ponder all possible outcomes. Each reading could have multiple possibilities, so you want to invest the time to make sure you really understand what's being communicated. You also don't want to do more than one reading in the same room on the same night. If drawn to a particular location, it's best to wait at least one week before doing another reading in the same place. You can do different readings in different rooms, but at least give yourself about an hour in between readings. That's how much time you should really give yourself to be able to interpret the actual reading itself. In the downtime between readings, this is a perfect opportunity to continue other methods of recording supernatural anomalies. Sometimes you can help them, and sometimes they can help you. Whether physical action is taken to carry out such deeds is up to you. So long as you live by the code, harm thy none. Kanzari is meant to inspire, improve, and influence in positive ways, not negative ones. Remember, each deck comes with all 88 cards, plus an expansive rules book to help you get the most out of your paranormal readings. You can order your deck now at kanzari.com.